So the Aurora inverters that I've repaired in a previous video, I was having a bit of an issue with one of them. Uh, this one I got uh, off a friend for free because basically it was uh, not working, uh, I repaired it. And I bought another one off eBay which I've also repaired. Now the problem I was having with this particular unit is once the voltage got to a certain level, just over the 250 volts, it was tripping out saying grid fail or basically like you know uh, the grid voltage was out of range and that wasn't happening on the other unit so i thought right okay there must be a setting somewhere that uh, you need to set up so i had a look on the internet and i tried to contact aurora who were no longer in business they actually sold the company to a company called abb so i emailed abb and ABB told us that they have sold the business and you need to contact a company called FIMA who now uh, who, who now are responsible for these. So I emailed them and uh, just saying, you know, I've got this uh, invert, I need to adjust one of the parameters, can you please give us the service password? Because a few searches on the internet this, uh, told us that's you know, what you needed to adjust it. So I got a, a response back from uh, FIMA that I wasn't uh, very happy with. Pretty much, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up on the screen here and we'll read it out. So this is the reply that I got back from FIMA. This is an old inverter that we no longer make. It's a PVI 3.6 TL out D that the warranty expired on the 3rd of the 8th, 2017. There will be a UK G83 setting that will be based around 10% either side of 230 volts, given an under voltage of 207 and an over voltage of 253. Modern standards are set around 240 volts AC, so under voltage is 216 and over voltage is 264. The setting in the inverter are by country standards UK G83 and there are no adjustments to take it to the modern G98 settings. So, they were pretty much saying that this inverter's obsolete, the warranty expired in 2017 and uh, it was impossible to do what I wanted to do. Now, I found that quite strange because the other inverter uh, that I've got next to it actually works perfectly. It doesn't have this issue. So I thought, well, there must be a, a way to adjust it because the other one doesn't trip out of that voltage, but this one does. So. I thought, right, we'll see if we can find some software. There might be some software around, you know, that, uh, some service software or something which might let, let us do it that route. So I had a look on the internet and the Aurora site was no longer available and I couldn't find any software. But then I remember about Wayback Machine or Internet Archive, as it's called now. And I, wonder, I thought to myself, I wonder if they've got a copy of the, uh, the software on their archives. So I had a look on Wayback Machine and I found all the downloads of all the software. So I started downloading, you know, all the different bits of software I could find. Um, and I tried running them and, you know, a, a lot of them needed a passcode. I thought, well, you know, there, there must be uh, a way to find out these passcodes. So, you know, I did what, uh, any, uh, <laughs> what any sort of software engineer would do and adopted it into a, a debugger or a, um, a disassembler. And we started having a look through the code. And there's a few interesting bits and pieces uh, which uh, I shall pull up on the screen. Now in this part of the program I found a couple of easter eggs. Basically when you press a key down and you're on the main form, this line here says if you press control shift and key value 90, which when I've looked it up is actually D, this uh, brings up the debug side of the program, which shows the communications between the program and the inverter. If we go further down here, I've got a couple of other uh, values. This one here, if you press Control Shift and key value 80, which is P, uh, it actually brings up a little Pong game. And the same here, if you press Control Shift and T, which is 84, it actually brings up uh, a Tetris game. So there's actually a couple of little Easter eggs uh, built into this software as well. Now, this is the part of the program that uh, generates the service password. Um, there's a routine here which uh, checks whether the serial number you've put in is more than six characters and whatever, and then it does a few calculations. Uh, it's got a couple of bits down here as well, and it uses this value of a, of a seed. Now, it's a little bit of a, looks a little bit of a mess, this, so what I did was I, um, worked out how it worked and then I wrote my own version of it uh, which is pretty much <laughs> these few lines here 
So if I run this, we should be to type in the serial number and it should um, generate a one four. So if I type a serial number of one, two, three, four, five, six, and it generate, and it gives her a service password. Another weird thing that was in the program was uh, something called get tiramisu. And it returns a picture of a tiramisu for some uh, strange reason. But yeah, it's another little odd thing that was in the uh, in the program. There was also some interesting passwords stored in plain text as well under the uh, class of access level. Uh, Aurora God 3745 and Power Dash 1 underscore Aurora. And also password for uh, some update zip files, it seems. And also for the area password factory, which uh, I'm not sure what that's for, but yeah, a few uh, a few extra things there as well. So it seems those two passwords, the Power 1 Aurora, is to give access level of installer. And the Aurora God 3745 is to uh, give you uh, access level of factory. Now there was another version of this program called Aurora Manager Lite version. And that had something called a setup area access. So, and if you type in, and it basically wants some details and then uh, you hit an arrow and it'll say the password field has to be six characters long. If you put a six characters in, hit enter. Uh, do you want to proceed? We'll say yes, and it says the password isn't valid. So I wrote a keygen for that part. So we'll just type in uh, some random values here. So I'll just copy and paste. Uh, and it wants a date of birth. And we need to generate the password. So if I hit generate password, it gives us all that. And so paste that in and we'll hit enter. And we'll say yes. And there we go. The user password is valid and the setup area was unlocked. Uh, like I say, my password generator, if you change the name, let's say we'll change it to Jane Doe. We'll hit generate password, it'll give you another one. Or we'll say Smith. Uh, we'll try changing the date. Uh, so, that's the... Uh, a password generator that I wrote as well to uh, access uh, this area of the software. So I wasn't very happy with the response that I got because the other unit that I had was working perfectly. And it was only this unit that was uh, tripping out with the over voltage error. So after spending the time looking at the programs and stuff, um, this is the reply that I sent back to Paul. Uh, thank you for the reply, but it seems it wasn't the answer I was looking for, so challenge accepted. So I spent the day reverse engineering some software, firmware, wrote a key generator and accessed the service menu myself. Incidentally, the code for my unit, 756043, the password is 645153. Please see attached picture of key gen I wrote quickly in Visual Studio. I also have another unit. Serial number 691070, which the password is 580180. This unit was working fine with the mail and voltage, hence why I knew it must be a configuration issue and it was possible to adjust it. After accessing the service menu and then, then set the nominal voltage to 250, as our supply is constantly around there, as we are very rural, and set the upper voltage to Vmax 264 and the lower to Vmin 230. I guess VG stands for voltage grid. The unit was originally a folded, faulty one that I purchased with an error E031, but after I replaced all the e relays and beefed up the tracks with some 2.5mm squared solid copper wire. I don't like seeing stuff that can be easily repaired being ending up in the landfill or being e-weast. Also, it was cheap. 
The other unit I bought prior to this one was totally dead. It too suffered from relay issues, as there was two, and there was also two rectifier diodes blown on the output side of the internal switch mode power supply that supplies the logic section. If you're interested, search by Fix It on YouTube for the repair video I did on that unit. While you probably don't condone any of this, I hope you found it interesting. Kind regards. So in the key generator I wrote, if we put the serial number of the first unit and generate, we should get 645153. And we do. And if I take the other serial number and paste it in here and hit generate, we should get 580180, which we do. And for this unit here, the service password is 645153. So we shall try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, one, five, three. And there we go. And there's a few parameters we can adjust now. We can adjust the voltage out parameters. Um, we can adjust the max. Grid. We're going to just uh, a morph enable, which I don't know what that does, but so we'll not mess with it. So I've got this software connected up to my inverter. Uh, it's not actually compatible with my inverter, so I had to fudge it so it actually connect, just so I can show you the uh, the Tetris and the Pong game. So if I press uh, Control Shift and P and move the mouse over this direction, we should be able to bounce this little ball around here. So I don't know whether this was just put in for the engineers when they were bored to sort of have a little game of Pong or whatever. Um, so that's the Pong game, and if we press Control Shift and T, we end up with a little Tetris game here. And you can move up with the uh, the comma and full stop keys. The forward slash key makes it drop to the bottom, and the space bar lets you rotate. So. Not that I was ever any good at Tetris, but yeah. So I started wondering if there was any other software available for these inverters. Uh, and I came across um, a PDF of how to convert one into a wind inverter on a site called Solar City. And it says what you will need, and it said the Aurora CVI 5.0.1 program with a link to it. And that sounds quite interesting. Then we'll download that one and have a go at that. Now, that one isn't written in .NET, uh, it's written in C or whatever, so I dropped it into um, xdebug32 and I found a couple of interesting strings in it, uh, one of them which was 91951. So, uh, I haven't actually got it connected to the invert at the moment, but if I just hit go and we'll hit uh, calculate inverter password it says sorry wrong password. Now if we go here and enter in 91951 and hit calculate password, it asks for a serial number, which is pretty much the same as the key gen that I wrote earlier. So if we do one, two, three, four, five, six, and we hit OK, it gives her a service password. So there's actually already a key gen built into the uh, Aurora CVI program, and that program allows you to pretty much alter pretty much every everything possible on the inverter. Um, some of the stuff I wouldn't dare touch, but it lets you pretty much alter every configurable value in the thing, and even reset, change the country code, change the serial number, change the model number. So yeah, I'll uh, connect it to the inverter and we'll have a look at that shortly. Now the software communicates with the inverter over RS-485 and there is a port on the side of the machine which you can plug a USB lead into, but apparently that's not recommended and when I tried it, it didn't actually work. So what they suggest is buying another RS-485 adapter and plugging that into some of the pins under here which we'll do shortly. So that's what I actually bought this uh, USB to RS-485 converter uh, and we'll plug this in onto the test pins and then it allows the software to communicate with the inverter. This is the uh, USB to RS-485 unit connected to the uh, or interface connected to the inverter. As you can see, um, 
It's powered up there and we'll uh, go over to the laptop screen now. This is the Aurora CVI program I was talking about. Uh, I've got it connected to the inverter currently and I've just had to change the address to address 2 because that's what the address my inverter is. And we'll hit go and it asks you for the password. So we'll put the password of 91951 uh, and you notice it'll actually calculate the inverter password at the bottom as well and now we're in and there's lots of stuff you can do in this program uh, I wouldn't advise messing about with any of the uh, values unless you know what you're doing I mean uh, we've got yeah universal parameters which will bring up pretty much everything you can adjust in the unit when uh, I click on it there and if you hover over uh, I'm sure it tells you what the selected variable is. Oh, if, you, if you actually click on it, it tells you at the bottom here selected variable and what it does. So if I click on that one for instance, max AV grid, which is 264, um, over frequency limit, under frequency limit, things like that. So. We'll not mess around with any of those. Uh, you can also do things like calibration or measure the calibration as well and I'll show you some nice uh, meters of everything here. And you can adjust things and send the values so we'll not mess around with any of those either. But just to give you an idea of uh, things that can be done with this localization. Um, that's for changing the country code and things. So we'll not muck around with those either. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. Well, if you enjoyed this video and found it useful or entertaining or whatever, then uh, please hit the like button. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.